Bodo people has got original habit of arts and crafts and its creation. Sericulture is one of the inborn like art of Bodo culture. Rearing of every one and finding out the threads and weaving different kinds of clothes are the basic basic Bodo society has got original arts and crafts and they have the system of uh, creation of new art within their own culture. One of them is Seri culture, which is inborn like art of tribal people among the Bodos. Bodo society has got their own arts and crafts. One of them is Seri culture. It is inborn like culture and tradition of Bodo society. This is rearing of Eri and Muga. This is silk. How they rear and find out traits from the cocoons of this Eri or Endi Empo has got a variety of system from starting from the breeding up to the finding of the cocoon is a long process. The Bodo women use one of the species of the plants. This is called Endi and Gonga Taisip and they used to give it to the worms of Muga and Eri. Whenever this Eri and Muga's worm become mature, they will be extracted from here and it is given in another dried leaves and in this dried dried leaves the worms used to rape and it becomes one cocoon. Then these worms are extracted from the cocoon and this cocoon is ready for the treats. After extracting the worms, the cocoons are boiled in the water and this is ready for airy treat. Then the worms also, one of the very delis delicious, uh, delicious food for them, they used to eat it, which is very popular among the Buddha society. Even they can sell it in the market, which price is very high in the market. So we do find that the system of rearing Eri and Muga is not only supporting the economic condition of the Buddha society, but it is also one of the important aspects of the arts and crafts. Buddha women has got the arts of weaving various colors or varieties of flowers with their traditional weaving implements like salgande, seriki, danganata, etc. These are very important aspects among the Buddhist society. Seeing the beautiful arts of flowers, one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the good uh, good critics told one day. She was the wife of the uh, wife of the then governor of Assam, that is Lady Hyderi. I have never seen such kind of arts and culture around the world, but I have seen now that a mother has opened out a beautiful, beautiful clothes, and it is also used for their children. So this is also one of the important art among the Buddhist society. Again, we do find that there are varieties of uh, there are varieties of that is dying system in our uh, Buddha society, which is known as uh, Rong Hanai or Gap Kanai. In the natural dying system, we do find 
that the simple nasal elements like the leaves of the tree and, and other herbals and shrubs are used for the purpose of dyeing. As Bodo people are adopted, shaped and molded by the nature, they have oil acquaintance with the nature's element. They know the art of natural dyeing. They extract varied colors from the varied colors elements from the species of the wild plants. These colors may be yellow, white, and varieties. And this is uh, inherited from the nature. So we do find that coloring of Eri and Muga. This is made of uh, white the uh, old straw. And this old straw is cut into pieces and a, and a little bit of lime is mixed here. And it is kept for three days. And afterwards, when these uh, these things become a bit reddish, then any cloth is given in this water. And after a few while, it has been seen that its color becomes very fine. So I think this is also one of the most important practice among the Buddhist society. Still now, it has been practicing, and it is going on as usual. And again, there is one system of dyeing the net. Bodo people are expert in fishing. They used to dye and uh, color the net uh, with one kind of uh, one kind of wild species plant. This is called gab. With this gab, they boil the gabs uh, after cutting it into pieces, and then uh, and then the net is thrown into that very place, uh, that very water, and then it has been dried up. After drying up, it becomes uh, black. And this black color has got its own uh, originality, which, uh, which, which increased the longevity of the very trees of the nets. And at the same time, it also, uh, it also become, uh, it become useful for fishing the fishing in the water. And again, we do find that we had the system, traditional system of preparation of ink. There was another day, in those days, in those days, the people did not know the modern scientific method of inventing the inks. They used to prepare inks with one type of the plants called Tunku Bergao and Daugengzela. When this Daugengzela is pounded and one kind of green uh, a, one kind of a green water comes out of it and this is used for ink and there was not any uh, type there was not just type of ink in that time and the people who are unable to afford to buy this ink they used to write with the feeders of the parts and hands and cocks and others in that time so it helped the people in that time in supporting their economic life also. The natural dying process is very important aspect in our Buddha society. But the system is going to, to be diminished in our modern time. There are many other factors. It is the economic factors that the species for, from which uh, this ink is made is not available in all the places. So they have to spend the time for collecting all the species in many other places or collecting from the jungles and other places. And again, now uh, there's uh, there, there are invention of uh, many other inks uh, with the invention of uh, this modern times science. This can be gold in cheap red in the market. That's why the system of natural dyeing is going to be diminished now in our modern time.
because the things or species by which they can make this uh, ink or dyeing is very rare. They have to collect from distant places on different places, so they cannot afford it easily. This is also one of the reasons why it is diminishing now. And again, nowadays the chemical, the chemical uh, invention of the ink can be caught very easily in the market in cheap bread. That's why that they are not willing to afford the system of this very nature dying. Bodo people as gold, traditional art of making many other materials and implements for their daily use from the bamboo. The bamboo culture is a great heritage of Bodo society. They can make various types of implements like zekai, kobai, for fishing, and for their daily, daily use. And even in constructing their house, bamboo is very useful. They have the art of constructing the house, which they can make bera, that means wall, and the roofs, that means, which is called ukum in the Bodo. It is very important system and important tactics of building a tapses house and hut, which is uh, learned since the time immemorial by the Buddha society. This art has got great importance during the time of uh, many other A few Bodo folk has the habit of making instruments from the wood. They use the traditional implements to make this musical instrument like serja, spru, kham, jota, laigrit, thorka, etc. These are very important uh, musical instruments of the traditional uh, society of the Nohalsara. Uh, Bodo people has got the system of traditional instrument making. This traditional in instruments are serja, which is made of one type of tree, which is known as bombarande. The instrument used for making these traditional instruments are quite traditional. They can use it during the time. One of the important important art of the Bodo society is traditional art of instrument making. They use traditional instrument for making this traditional instrument of music. These are serja, kham, spoon, jota, laigrit, thorka, and others. This is very valuable for preserving their culture. This art is a significance among their society which can highlight their folk songs folk tradition, etc. This is one of the important art which has been practicing since the time immemorial in our society. Bodo society's social system is characterized by egalitarianism. There is no any caste system, division of work, Bodo society is characterized by the element of egalitarianism. In this system, there is no casteism, there is no division of class and division of work. Everybody or every section of the people can participate in any other works and any other functions of the society. In generally, in any other social functions, every people participate and take part in the ceremonies and functions. In society, the old men and uh, aged men or women are respected by the younger or uh, younger generation. So 
There is not any difference between master and slave. They can eat together, they can dine together, and in the same place at the same time. On the other hand, this led to say the great scholars from England when they come to do the missionary work with Reverend S. Endel, this truthfulness, trustworthiness, and straightforwardness. So we do find the element of this castless society and the society in which there is not any class division. So this system signifies that they have got the distinctive feature of their social system. Again, we do find in the modern society a system of community works in which everybody or every people can participate for their economic activities. It does not only save the time, but at the same time, it saves the economy of particular individual. And another device of this community work is Gatha Zanai. Everybody or every society or every individual of the society can participate in this Gatha Zanai. It will save the economy and times of every people, every household in the village or in the society. So this is one of the distinctive features of the social system which led to say Reverend Endel in this way. We do find the elements of democratic in which there exists liberty and equality and border political system. Village administration is a fine example of this system in which everybody can take or share in the decision making. Everybody can uh, talk and discuss freely and frankly in this meeting. As general rule, the village headman is the head of the village council, which is known as Gamini Apat. In this Gamini Apat, every people can participate and can discuss and can participate in the decision making. So, there is the system of element of democracy in village administrative system. Huh? Oh. In both the social administration system, Halmazi is an important post which is selected or elected democratically by the villagers. He is a paid servant. He is paid according to the will and decision which is taken by the general people. So his main work is uh, how to integrate, how to make relation with the general people and, and just to make concern with the happenings and affairs of the village administration. And he make relation with the village headman and informs all the villagers regarding the respective affairs and happenings and the problems of the village. So this Halmazi has got an important role in village administration along with the villagers and village headmen. So for the decision making is concerned and the adjustment of social administration is concerned, we do find a system of democratic elements in Bodo village administration system. Whenever any person is accused and he is proved by proper proper witness, then he will be imposed with a penalty of uh, some case or kind, and sometimes he will be he will be given physical assault, but it is within the limitation. And whenever he is proved that he is guilty, then he must have to bow down his head before the general people. Everybody will forward their views regarding his misact and harm done to any other people. Even one of the important scopes for defending himself is given by the village council. He can prove that he is harmless or he has, he has not done any offense against any other people. If he can stand on this point, then he will be free from giving any other penalty in the society. So this system is an example of democratic administration in our Buddha society, which is a great example of protection of equality and liberty to the older people, irrespective of women and men. 
Traditionally, Bodo society has got the system of means of social control. It is under the jurisdiction of administration of the village council. The means of social control is known as the system of bath. There are four baths by which they can recognize, they can identify, they can uh, impose punishment, and uh, thirdly, the purification. These four, these five baths are Kulabud Bath, Laukar Bath, Hongslot Bath, Ogor Bath, and Dauki Bath. This imposition of the system of means of control is based upon the three categories. One is identification of the crimes of guilt done, done by the particular man or individual. And the second stage is punishment to be imposed to the person who has done harm or guilt to the individual concerns or others. And the third stage is purification. The highest crime or guilt in our border society as per the social norms is Ogor Bad. Ogor Bad is imposed to the people or to the, to the individual concerned who has done a heinous crimes like, crimes like the main principle of adopting this system of bad as a means of social control is just to preserve secret and sanctity of the society. The highest crime which is falls in the category of this ogre bar is imposed when a particular individual have illicit sexual relation with any other woman or girl. And secondly, when the individual slaps his mother, father or elder who is related and who is who has a blood relation with himself the thirdly why he kills the anybody or the person concerned and why he slaughter any other cow so thus just to make a prevention against such kind of evil acts or corrupt practices this over bird is imposed so this is the process of identification all the villagers will unite together and there will be witness along with them and those witnesses will prove that the particular person has done this great mistake or has committed this wrong to the particular individual. Then everybody will be agreed with this point and he will be punished by imposition of this new ogre bath. As per the rules of the ogre bath, one of the small hut is built by the side of the river and they have to enter inside that very, inside that very uh, small hut. Supposing about the sexual relationship between one, uh, one brother and sister. Here in the tent we have included there the cousin, brother and sister. They met illicit sexual relationship between each other. So it has been proved by the general people of the village council and they had to enter inside the small hut which is built by the side of a river and mean for the purpose. And after, after they have entered in this uh, small hut. This hut is set fire by the villagers as a, as a sign or as a significance of the uh, punishment that wrong done before. And then they have to jump in the river and the tag bed as a sign of purification. After coming back uh, from, the, from the river or from the, uh, from the river, then they have to pray for the gold in front of the Oza and Deori and they will sprinkle a uh, Santi water, that means uh, pure water, which is mean that they have been purified from that time. So this is the system of Ogor Bath, so that every people must live within the barrier of um, social norms. If they violate the social norms, it will be punished severely and the people must have to obey and respect the sacred and sanctity of the society. Again, we do have the system of the education. Traditionally, Bodo people believe home or family is the first ground of the education system. Every girl 
and every boy, either young or as it, they must to learn their good nature and good behavior at their home. Home is the learning ground or first uh, educational institution as per the Bodo ideology. So then, there is one good proverb in our uh, Bodo society. Those who does not deserve or cannot uh, cannot learn the good behavior in his younger time, he will be unable to marry or get married with that uh, whenever the time comes. So he must have to learn in his early childhood whatever activities. Suppose a girl must have to learn how to cook, how to how how to go in the agricultural field, how to worship Bato, the god of our mother people and how to do, uh, how to do all the household, household works and at the same time, how to preserve the sacred and sanctity of the society. At the same time, the boys also must have to learn every good activities. They must honor the elders, saying them or calling them Ada, Agai, Abo, Aboy. This is an English brother, sister, father, mother, like that. So this is the first educational ground in the border society that every people must be well, well nature up to the age of well nature during the time of their early childhood and so that they can become a good man in their future. Well, as the tribal people has been adopting and they have been saved and nurtured by the nature, they have got well acquaintance with numbers of roots, tubers, jungles, herbs and stuff, which has got very, very important medicinal value and which, which they use for their uh, medicine purpose for curing many other ailments and diseases. The medical religious practitioners of Bodo is known as Oza. He has got knowledge regarding the identification of various types of medicinal uh, herbs, shrubs, roots, jungles, etc. And he can cure by identific identification by identifying all these very roots and applying this medicine and particular ailment for a particular ailment and diseases. So this role of Oza is very important aspect in studying the traditional uh, healthcare and medicine. One of the glaring example in my eye is, uh, my eye is, that is caring of the fracture. The simple three herbs is necessary for curing the fracture. This is the name of these three uh, herbs are Nelejora, Harjora, and Timijora. The Oza grind it nicely, and after grinding it, it apply it on the hands, on the place where the fracture has taken place. Then the bamboo splits, made, made of bamboo splits, uh, a implement which is known as seren, is uh, bound together, bound there in the place of the fracture and it is kept for the seven days after seven days we have seen that this thing has been cured and it is becoming much better than before and it is one of the important aspects of this Oza's traditional health care and medicine. As Oza has got the knowledge of ritual practices he has got the knowledge of performing many other rituals or pujas for the well-being of the uh, general people. So he utilized this, uh, this practice of puja for the well-being of curing the many other diseases and ailments of the patient. And at the same time, he applied the medicine for the purpose by which he can cure many other ailments. So the Oza has got very important role in 
curing treatment and finding out many other important medicinal value values or trees herbs shrubs roots and etc which is a great heritage of modern ayurvedic uh, treatment it is well known fact that the modern allopathic system of treatment has got much more reaction which is affecting the health of the people so the people has been able to realize that these techniques of ayurvedic of or traditional uh, techniques of healthcare and medicine should be improved and it is a matter of uh, it is a matter of very important aspect that now it is the research work on finding out the traditional uh, traditional medicines and healthcare system is going on so the ozas in our bodo tradition the practice of uh, healthcare and medicine with traditional medicine and healthcare is very important aspect in our bodo society the traditional practice of arts and ritual of bodo society is not confined only with the ritual but it has got the elements of theosophical aspects ethical aspects as well as instruction to the human being to spend the life as a human being who is this actual in life just to cite the example of the religion bato when the ritual of bato take place we can realize the term of bato that ba means five and to means deep what is the this five deep means and what is the meaning lying behind that five deep it means the truth of five elements of the nature air water heat or light art and ether this truth is always true there is one popular proverb in our bodo society that is daukhai alai chhamakai daukhai alai purakai daugu alai chhamakai sanjani sana senabai inkharakai the english rendering of this proverb is that the crow is never to be white and the hair is never to be black and and the sun never rise towards the west it means that the truth is always true the truth never be untrue so the human society must follow the way of the truth so this ritual is uh, concerning towards this uh, ethical aspects of our ritual practices or bodo philosophy again we do find the we would find the five principle in our bodo uh, philosophy it is the teaching of five principle suppose love love to god love to all the living creatures love to motherland love to children and the women and at the same time love to the all natural uh, animals so this relates towards the instruction of the human being to love everybody and to love uh, to love everybody and to live in a peaceful life again we do find that in the kerala festival which is the big, biggest festival in our bodo society it is it is performed performed just to indicate the various instructions to the people for the well-being of the society the, the in the kerala festival the bodo people are uh, respect or worship the 18 god and goddesses there are 18 dances in the name of this 18 god and goddesses but every every go, uh, there are various types of the dances relating to the to all the god and goddesses
all the dances of Kerala in the name of respective god and goddesses represent a symbolic nature of expression regarding the instruction to the man how man should live in his worldly life and how he should spend his life after taking birth in this world. So it has got its own meaning which can be found during the times of Kerai festival in our Buddha society. This is one of the important aspects which is combining both the metaphysical, uh, ethical and instructions to the human society for being a real man in our real life. Well, as the opinion of the most scholars, it is believed that the Bodo, the Bodos are the first agricultural nomad who practiced well. The most scholar believe that Bodo people are the first agricultural agricultural nomad who practiced the system of agriculture in Bang Ban and the system of modern techniques of canal. So it is well known fact that all the Mongolian people uh, who are belonging to that race know the art of hunting process, rearing of the silk worm, and the agriculture for which they have been practicing for their living. One of the, one of the important, uh, important administrators during the time of British rule, Captain Butler recognized the Bodo people as one of the best agriculturists. So they have got the tra traditional system of this cultivation. First of all, they have got the system of the seedling. How the seedling has been prepared, and then afterwards they make the uh, different kind of system of plantation and the third harvesting system. So they have got this speciality within their self. On the other hand, they have got system of embankment and the irrigation system. There is the process. Uh, still, this process is going on that while there is not the system of modern uh, irrigation system or canal system, they used to dig canal which is far distance, uh, say about 15 or 20 kilometers. They have the system of uh, they have the system of cross passing the water with specific type of the pipe which is known as the naudra and uh, distributing the water which is known as duiva. So with this special kind of agricultural techniques they used to they used to used to work in the field of agriculture and which is a great heritage of this modern time. Except that traditional system of agriculture, Bodo used to practice the system of weaving, which is one of the most important part of the technology. Bodo women are expert in weaving. They, they weave different types of clothes and varieties of flowers with blossom and the looms. It has been well known fact that since the very beginning, weaving is a traditional technology of the Buddhist society. The Buddha women can weave different types of color, different types of flowers, which is blossomed in the looms of uh, Bodo women. Varieties of, varieties of flowers, which is derived from the gift of the nature, is, is blossomed in the loom of the Bodo women. 
So this weaving has played a very important role in Bodo society and this whenever this will be shaped and molded properly then it will be a great uh, it will be very very important help for economy in their society. Moreover, they used to they used, they used to adopt some special kind of method for uh, preserving of the food. These are the nafam and preparation of the zoo. This has got some scientific method of preservation. Though they do not they do not use any other chemical or fertilizer materials in preparing all this uh, all this food preserving preserving food. So then we do find that the three-generation system of preservation of food, especially in Napam, is made of the dried peas and orona leaves. These two are founded in the Ural, which is known as mortar in English, and it has been kept in the tube of a bamboo, and then it is covered with, uh, with a little bit of uh, dried leaves of banana, and covered by the mud and it has been kept for a long time and it can be preserved up till up to the three or four months and after that whenever it will be tested and it will be hooked then it will it will be very tasteful uh, for the Buddhist society so it can be preserved for long uh, six months or seven months this is one of the most important traditional system of food preservation in the Buddhist society Again, another important method of preservation of the food is preparation of the zoo or rice beer. Rice beer plays a very important role in our Bodo society. It is needed and necessary and most important in all the social functions, ceremonies, religious practices and etc. Moreover, it is really very helpful in uh, in in many other works which helps the man uh, for increasing it uh, Nafam has got its own scientific value according to the most uh, most experienced doctor Mr. B. B. Brahma uh, he examined the, all the ingredients of the Nafam and he, he has explained that there is one important element which is necessary for, for, uh, for our health. This is vitamin K. This vitamin K uh, is important for preventing, preventing, uh, preventing the bleeding of childbirth women, women and who is health them during this most critical period. So this Nafam or Nafam has got this quality which can help uh, the health of our human being. In the same way, the preparation of rice beer is also made by the natural, uh, natural elements which is not uh, included, in which there is not an inclusion of uh, some other chemical elements. These are specially, specially for preparing the rice beer, a special kind of medicine is made, which is known as emau. This emau is prepared with the, some leaves, just like as jackfruit leaves, fern, and leaves of one type of herbs, it is known as and mukna and others. So then it will be pounded in the oral along with the rice, and it is made, uh, and then it is made just like as a uh, just like as a slice and it is ready for preparation of this uh, medicine of rice beer then rice is cooked and after it has been cooked in the form of rice it is applied this this emo is applied after grinding after it has been grinded it, it is applied to the in the rice and it is kept in one type of uh, arden pot which is known as as which is known as tapka and it can be preserved for a long time and 
it is well known fact that whenever the rice is made of boradhan or which is known uh, as the special type of rice then if a typical preparation of rice beer is a specific type of method which is applied by the Udo society. All the ingredients necessary for preparation of rice beer is uh, extracted from the, uh, the nature, nature just like as the leaves of a uh, jackfruit tree a fern and uh, leaves of uh, pineapples, etc. And this is the medicine which is applied for preparation of the zoo or rice beer. This, after having been prepared all these things, that this can be preserved for long, one month or two months or three months. So this kind of special type of preservation can preserve the rice beer for long time, which is a special uh, special devices or method of food preservation among the Buddha society. According to the expert, the traditional produced rice beer contain not less than eight. According to the expert, the rice beer or zoo, who is this considered as necessary for health contains 85% of carbohydrate, 15% of vitamin A, B, C, and 5% of alcohol. So it has got its own scientific, scientific value for the goodness of our health, which is used among the Buddhist society. Rice beer is not only necessary for health, but it is necessary in performing some other functions, ritual ceremonies, and festivals like marriages, etc. So, it is used most important, uh, most uh, enthusiastically by the Buddha society. Whenever a Buddha people get tired after working the whole the day, and he get tired, then he will take a glass of this rice beer, and it, he will feel relaxed with this, uh, with this rice beer or zuvide. So it is a very good thing for uh, for increasing the enthusiastic enthusiast, enthusiastic attitude for the Bodo people during the time of holy work. A Bodo folk, a, a Bodo folk has got a specific rules and regulation for positioning every house. Especially there are four houses. The first and most important house is known as Noma No. That is the no, this is known as the mother house. This mother house has got three rooms. One is Ising, another is Okom and the third is Kopra, who is, is mean for sleeping. The first room, which is known, of, known as Ising, is regarded as the most sacred, where the cooking takes place and where there is the altar of Batu Burai and goddess of oil. And uh, straight to this room, straight to this Okong, in the midst or in the altar in the altar in the midst of this courtyard there is the altar of Batu. This of Batu is placed uh, placed uh, in the middle side of the courtyard and the second important house of Bodo is uh, stand towards the east which is known as granary or which is which is called as Bakri and it is known granary in English. The reason for uh, positioning granary towards the north is that there are many other important uh, substances which is preserved and kept in granary 
especially Paddy. Paddy, Paddy is kept for long one year. That's why the, the maximum heat is necessary for preservation of heat so that it cannot get spoiled or rotten. And there are many other elements inside the granary. These are kept uh, inside this granary. So the mo much more heat is necessary to preserve all these uh, elements and necessary goods and articles inside the granary. So it has been positioned towards the north of the courtier. And again, and again towards the south, there is the cow set. It is positioned in this way that the worst substances of uh, the cows or uh, the bad elements or bad articles which is flow uh, during the time of rainy season towards the, towards the south. And during the time of rainy season, all the, uh, all the, uh, all the substances or worst materials will flow according to the flow of the rain or water towards the south. So this is the reason why this cow set has been positioned towards the south. And in the westward, there is one house which is known as Sura. It is mean for especially, uh, especially sub guests or young people who can stay here, who can, who can enjoy there during the time of uh, lean season whenever there is not any work and whenever uh, guests come here. And there, nowadays there is one system of building or positioning one house uh, towards the south, uh, towards the south uh, and towards the north of this house. It is known as Nosuna. In this house other guests also can sleep, can stay and uh, the people, the men, of the same family also can stay in this house. And especially, Bodo society adopts some specific rules and regulation. This is specially a uh, mean for Nomano or mother, mother house. In this mother house, nobody is allowed to enter except the members of the own family. Even in the previous time, except the women, the men can, could not enter inside the Isi, which is mean for uh, Godfather Bato and at the same time altar of Goddess of Mainau and which is uh, in which place towards the south of this altar in the same room of this opong the rice is cooked and curry is also prepared there and that's why nobody was allowed there so that any other germs or uh, dark elements cannot enter during the time of cooking. It has got its own scientific meaning. And another room within the Nomano is Okong. In this Okong, uh, whenever any other guest or the people of the same family can eat there and sit together in this room, and they can do everything that the household work within this room. And the last room is uh, la last room which is positioned towards the west is Kopra. It means Ko Upra. In this place, the important things or the sacred things can be kept by the owner of the family. This is known as Siba. Si means float, Ba means that the inside. That means in this very place, money, goals and other can be kept inside that very shiva. That's why it has been known as inside or secrecy. The means of shiva means that. So the house of Nomano is respected and honored and worshipped by the Bodo people as a house of sacred and sanctity. However, anybody wants to enter, he will not be allowed to enter here, but uh, he will uh, he'll be allowed to enter in the Sovrano and in the other way, whenever necessary, he can sleep and stay in the southward. There is one home. This is known as Nosuna. So, this is the reason why the Bodo people, uh, uh, Bodo people position in such way. Towards the north there is Nomano. Towards the east there is Granary. Towards the south there is uh, Kauset, and towards the west there is Sugrano. The scientific reason behind that has got its specific meaning. 
point about Nomano is position, uh, uh, position uh, towards the north. The heat of the sun directly come uh, during the time of this midday. So it is uh, very suitable that some other important things may be kept here that can be dried, dried up and in the uh, dried up and at the same time it can get heat of the sun so it has got its own scientific meaning and at the same time the position of the granary that I have already told is very important aspect and this is the reason why this uh, this uh, position of northern, southern, eastern and western, western in for building of Bodo home or homestead is made and I think this has got this has been practiced since the time immemorial from the nation. As per my experience regarding the Bodo society, social system, economic system and judicial system, I do find that they have got their own sanctity and status within their own self. What I do find among the Buddha society is that they respect and honor the truthfulness and what is the basic reality within themselves. So far, the customary law is concerned. It is based upon the uh, preserving the means of social control or preserving the society in the right way so that not any corrupt practices and evil practices also cannot take place. On the other hand, I do find in the philosophical aspect or Bodo philosophy or the battle, whenever it can be, uh, it can be, it can be utilized in the outside world, that five principles will be able to do a lot of, towards the well-being of the society as well as bringing unite to the older human society. Again, what I do find among the Bodo society that it can contribute towards the outside world is that they have got the traditional system of traditional system of uh, traditional system of this religion uh, 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 village administration system. I do find the good elements of equality and liberty which is existing in the village administration of Buddha society. Here is a good example of the democratic principle where we do find liberty and equality. If these elements of liberty and equality can be utilized properly uh, in the outside world with the principle of this uh, traditional Bodo administrative system, customary system, I'm thinking only to take all these good elements to the outside world if the outside world accept and it can be implemented according to the spirit of the national mainstream uh, which can co op with our modern trend of modernity or modernism. Uh, this will be very fruitful and very he good heritage towards the nation and uh, around the world as well. Yes, I do feel one of the important elements of community fishing among the Buddhist societies, which has been existed since the time immemorial. It is one of the systems which is known as the Dihi Hanai. Dihi Hanai means calling the, all the people within the area to catch the fish. It is one of the present occasions when the tank or pond is going to dry up and all the fish can be caught within this time then every people are informed. Before informing the people, they will discuss with Gambara and villagers that let us you know, let us uh, call all the people as as a sign of enjoyment and let us take enjoyment during this the pleasure time. And then one man will go uh, to many other villages uh, in the surrounding that very pond and they will be called saying that you please come here and take a part in fishing because it is free for all. Then after getting this news, every people will come here and they will catch the fish and they will get very pleasant. And this is one of the taking the pleasure in the occasion 
uh, in which everybody is free and free from the world. Important aspect of this community fishing is that there is no bar of any other communities. Either he may be Chantal, he may be Bodo, he may be Muslim, he may be Raba, and many other caste and community people may come here and enjoy. It is a symbol of subsistence and coexistence between one community and other community. I think this, this practice is very good for the society.